Okay, decide whether the graph of each equation is a circle or an ellipse. Write the equation in standard form and graph the conic section. We are not going to graph these, but we are going to find the center and the radius or the center and the A and the B. Don't worry about the foci. Okay, so let's go take a peek. Let's start by grouping x squared plus 10y, y squared, oh, sorry, just x squared, y squared plus 10y, and then we're going to move the negative 16 over. And so completing the square, x squared is already in a square, but let's go do half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So we're going to get x squared still just by itself, plus the y plus 5 squared perfect is equal to 9. And so notice that this is equal to some sort of a radius, not 1, and there's no denominators yet or no coefficients in front of those. So we're going to say that this one is a circle with a center at 0, negative 5, and a radius of 3. Square root of 9 is just 3. Does that make sense? All right, next one. We've got 4x squared, and then notice that there's no other x's, so then I'm going to leave space, and I'm going to do y squared minus 6y, leave space, and I'm going to move the constant to the right side. And so this is already a perfect square. It's got a coefficient, so I'm leaning towards ellipse. And then for the 6, we're going to go half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. That's doing the B work. Whatever I add to one side, I add to the other. So I'm going to be left with 4x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 4. And I've got this coefficient over here, so I want to divide by 4 in order to get rid of that. And I'm left with x squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 1 and this is over 4, and so therefore this guy is an ellipse, and that is with a center 0, 3, and an A, remember how there's an invisible one down here? A is the larger, so square root of 4 is just 2, B is the smaller, square root of 1 is just 1, and there's my ellipse. All right, let's group the next one, x squared plus 4x, y squared minus 8y, half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. I get the x plus 2 squareds, y minus 4 squareds, and that's just going to be equal to 16. Notice there's no coefficients in front causing me to divide, so I'm just going to have a circle with a center negative 2, 4, and a radius of 4, square root of that 16. Okay, uh, this next one's got coefficients staring at us, so I'm already leaning towards ellipse, but we'll see. Okay, so dividing out the 4, I'm left with x squared minus 8x. Dividing out the 25, I'm left with y squared plus 4y, and that was equal to 60, uh, negative 64. And so half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16, but it's 16 4 times. 16 times 4 is 64. And then we've got half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, but it's 4 25 times. So it's 100. So we're going to be left with the 4x minus 4 squareds, 25y plus 2 squareds equals 100. Divide by 100 because of these coefficients and because we want it equal to 1. We're left with x minus 4 squared over 25y plus 2 squared over 4 equal to 1. I've got an ellipse. with a center at 4, negative 2, and an A of 5, 
and a B of two. That one kind of took some space into the next box, so we'll see how we can be creative here with space. X squared minus four X, then leave space. Y squared plus six Y. Let's bump that 12 over. Half of four is two, two squared is four. Half of six is three, three squared is nine. I'm left with x minus 2 squared, y plus 3 squared. And so this looks like a nice circle with center of 2, negative 3, and radius 5. Yay! Ooh, look at the next one. It's looking very ellipsy. Uh, let's see how I can make space for this. I might have to write it and then erase it. 4x squared minus 40x. This is actually already grouped. I'm just going to start by dividing out the 4 because of space purposes. All right, 4x squared minus 10x. Leave space. 9y squared minus equals negative 388. Now I actually have to grab my calculator for the 108 divided by 9. Okay, 108 divided by 9 is 12. All right, so now we do the B work on the 10 and the 12, the newbies. So half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25, but it's 25 four times. So that's going to be adding 100. Half of 12 is 6, 6 squared is 36, but it's 36 nine times, which is 324. So 324 plus 100 is 424 minus 388. It's going to leave us 36. And so we get 4x minus 5 squared perfect, 9y minus 6 squared perfect. And then to get rid of that 36, we're going to be left with x minus 5 squared over 9 y minus 6 squared over 4 equals 1. I now see that it's an ellipse with the center at 5, 6, and an a of 3 and a b of 2. Woo, look at the work on those ones. All right, are you starting to get better at picking those out? Okay, this bottom section is just a review from first semester for finals. We've only got 2a, b to the third happening one time. Then we've got 4a squared b, 4a squared b happening two times. So now we go number times number. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. a to the invisible one, 2 and 2. Remember, we just add those exponents, so 2, 4, 5. So a to the fifth. And then b. I've got b to the third, b to the invisible one, b to the invisible one, three, four, five, also b to the fifth. All right, this is the exponent rules. Next, we've got 100 over 60. We're just going to treat this number as its own fraction that we need to simplify. I can immediately divide by 10, cutting off those zeros. How could I reduce 10 six? Well, 2 goes into both of those leaving me 5 thirds as the reduced fraction. Now I'm looking at x to the third over x to the fifth. Picture three x's on top and five on the bottom, where three cancel each other out and there's two left on the bottom. Well, what was the rule we learned for that one? We learned the subtract rule. Three minus five would be negative two, and negative two moves to the bottom. Next, I've got a y to the negative one that wants to move to the bottom with the other y's. So nine plus that one, is going to become that. What if you did the subtract rule? It would be negative 1 minus 9, which is y to the negative 10, and any negative exponent wants to move down to the other side. Anyways, that you look at it, this is your final result here of your simplified fraction, and you are done. All right, next one says to the power of 1 fourth. Remember that anything to a fractional exponent could be done either Tia or Tehani's style. So 81, if I break this up, is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And notice I'm looking for groups of four. X's, I've got eight. Notice those groups of four and Y's. So 
So here I go circling. I can take out a 3. I can take out an x squared. 1, 2, 3. I can take out a y to the third. And there's my final result, my simplification. All right, this next one says to the power of 2 thirds. So 343, can you look at your exponent chart or practice with a calculator on that 343 for a second? What do you think of? I don't know if most of you think of sevens. I'm not quite sure. But anyways, this is 7 to the third and 6 to the third. Everything's to the power of 2 thirds. And we're going to shower that power. So it becomes 7 to the 3 times 2 thirds. And that crosses out and just gives us 7 squared on top over 6 to the third times 2 thirds, where the 3 crosses out and just leaves me 6 squared on the bottom. So my final answer for this one is just 4936. Does that make sense to you with all that showering the powering going on? Anything to the power of 0 is just 1. And then it's 8x happening to a power of 2 times. 1 times 8x is just 8x. 8 times 8 is 64. x times x is x squared. This next one, the 3 has no power, but the 2x has a negative 1. So it moves the entire thing downstairs that's to the power of negative 1. And we don't really have to put that it's to the power of 1 because that just means it's to itself. And it's done. All right, how are you feeling on those exponent rules for the final? Those coming back to you?